All right, so I received an email from a bookkeeping side hustle community member, and he wanted my feedback about building a million-dollar bookkeeping business instead of a side hustle. Let's quickly read what he wrote. Okay, thank you for your community and all the information on your website. It's truly amazing. I have a big picture question. I'm looking to grow a bookkeeping consulting business for a specific industry. I've not found much on building a firm as in having employees or W9 bookkeepers in any of the training sites. I'm starting off with the idea of myself being certified and working as the main bookkeeper, but I haven't seen anyone speaking of growth. I'm looking to have a $1 million business, not a $100,000 business. Any insight or direction on this? Or is it as simple as making sure my pricing is set up to withstand W9 or employee support? My wife and I run a $2 million service industry business right now, and I'm looking to branch out into that industry to assist others in their business fundamentals and growth. I expect I cannot handle all the work that I will find, so that is why I'm thinking larger right from the start. Thanks for any insight or thoughts you may be able to provide. Well, I'm tickled he wanted my advice. So even though I'm personally still very much building a small yet lucrative part-time virtual business in the accounting field, I've been around long enough to have formed some opinions to be able to answer this question. So I've got three main parts in my reply to this gentleman. I want to give a warning first about a firm's gross revenue versus the actual cash that goes into the business owner's pocket. Two, I want to talk about what skills you need to concentrate on developing if you want a large firm. And three, I'm going to give Dale if my best tip if I were in his shoes and anyone else who has similar goals to him. All right, so here goes. Okay, so we're going to start with the warning. Dale here mentions that he plans on being the one to work in the business at first as he grows and then start hiring a team. So when you take this path, you have to be really good at two things. You have to be really good at accounting and you have to be really good at business, right? You have to be a good technical bookkeeper, which is hard. You've got to really, really understand the debits and credits and how to unwind messy payroll mistakes and swollen undeposited funds accounts and QuickBooks. And you need to be a whiz at all the cloud apps and integrations that, you're, that are your secret weapons to be able to work quickly in a client file, in, in many client files, and scale. And on top of that, you have to be good at running a business. Now, Dale here says that he already is running a $2 million operation. So he probably has some of these business skills. So he's way ahead of the game, and he also probably knows how hard it is. But if you are bad at either of those two things, you might accomplish your goal of a million dollar business, but you're probably gonna be pretty miserable along the way. If you're good at one of those skills and can't envision getting good at the other one, you could hire a person to compliment you, but that is not the path that I see most people take. Most of the folks that I see that are trying to do this and grow large are usually doing technical bookkeeping and they're building the business structure. And it's hard to be good at both, which is why I often give people the warning that I think people should be very skeptical anytime they hear another business owner and especially industry coaches and gurus talk about top line gross revenue numbers. Who cares if you make a million dollars in gross revenue if you aren't putting much in your own pocket or if you're working insane hours? And there are plenty of businesses in the accounting and bookkeeping and tax industry, frankly, any industry where that business makes a very high gross revenue number, but the owner does not actually make a lot of money for the effort that they expend. So that is the warning to Dale and the rest of y'all listeners. So now let's talk about the skills that Dale needs. So Dale specifically states that he plans on being the main bookkeeper at first because he knows the niche he plans to serve. Now, knowing the niche doesn't guarantee that he knows accounting fundamentals in a rock solid way and that he knows bookkeeping software super rock solid. So Dale, you may or may not have to improve that part of your skill set. Make sure you have a plan to be really good at accounting and to be really good at a bookkeeping software. But even the best technical bookkeeper that wants to grow a million dollar firm will have to soon switch to improving their business skills more than their accounting skills. For our industry in particular, I think Dale needs to improve his business skills in two particular areas. One is focus on your systems and processes, and the other is to focus on retaining and managing talent. You have to become obsessed with learning about processes and systems to run a modern bookkeeping firm. This is the killer for most firms. They have too much information residing in the owner's or the employee's heads. Make the investment in developing this skill early in your business because it's hard to backtrack and clean up bad systems. Ask me how I know. The second skill that Dale needs to focus on is attracting and retaining talent. Now, I don't have a lot of advice on how to do this because I haven't done it because I'm on a different path, but I think it's supremely important and will make or break the joy of your journey. If you 
If any of you listeners have advice or resources on how to attract and retain talent, please chime in in the comments below. And while you're there, hit subscribe. Now, some of you veterans might be thinking that I missed a very important third business skill that Mr. Dale needs, and that is sales and marketing. But honestly, I think a niche bookkeeping business with good processes and good talent probably doesn't need to worry about that very much. Because when you're obsessed with systems and processes, a part of your process is going to be asking for referrals and reviews. And I bet you'll also have a low stress, simple system for upselling additional services to existing clients and a process for annual price increases for existing clients. And all that is kind of like being good at sales without being good at sales in the traditional sales and marketing sense of the word. All right, who here likes Easter eggs? Before I get to my advice about exactly what I think Dale should do if I were in his shoes, I've got two Easter eggs for you. So the first Easter egg is about one of my very favorite podcast episodes ever that I recommend to people who are debating whether they want to have a lucrative solo shop or a larger and lucrative big shop. It's an episode on Side Hustle Nation with Nick Loper. I love this episode and have listened to it several times. If you are listening to this video right now and you don't know if you're going to put um, a lot of money in your pocket by having a small bookkeeping business, or if you're going to make a lot of money by having a large operation, you need to listen to that episode. I think it will help folks decide if you want to take the operator path or the agency path. Now, in the showdown episode by Nick Loper, it's between two businesses in the cl house cleaning industry, but when they say the word cleaning, just substitute the word accounting. The link is below, or just Google Side Hustle Nation Showdown Freelance versus Agency. Easter egg number two. So I don't exactly know how to word this perfectly, but my second Easter egg is to think about using the word CFO services, virtual CFO or fractional CFO instead of the word bookkeeping. Now you have to do very rigorous and detailed bookkeeping. So you will definitely still need to build a very good foundation of bookkeeping services. But I'm just noticing that there are a ton of people out there who are calling themselves bookkeepers who are providing a whole lot more than simple, straightforward bookkeeping. They're acting much more like an advisor about the finances of the business, but they're not charging for it. And Dale, if you are already operating a company in the niche that you're thinking of niching your bookkeeping business in, and the fact that you even have a niche, you are really going to have an easy time of offering valuable CFO level advice because you know exactly what they need to hear, and you're going to see tons of examples of it with your niche clients. So what I'm saying is that you need to study the people who are saying the word CFO, and don't be afraid to have that as a part of your vision for your bookkeeping business. CFO services sounds a whole lot more expensive than bookkeeping services. All right, now we've arrived at my best and most practical advice for Dale based on what he shared his plans were. So I think that you should make an investment in getting told exactly what to do by people who are ahead of you and who are having success. I don't think that normal people or even pretty high achieving people can get to where you want to be while avoiding having a long, long period of misery if you don't get a lot of help. From my vantage point, it seems that like the people who try to do it all on their own are pretty miserable. So some of the options I'm going to recommend will be less than a few hundred dollars a month. If you skip a vacation for just one year, you can find a membership or support group or mastermind to invest in and you'll quite likely never have to skip vacation again. So there are a couple ways to do it. I'm going to bucket these into two groups, franchise model or mastermind model. And if you go down below, you're going to get a handy Google Doc listing all the direct URLs for all of these. And I might keep updating the Google Doc with other examples if listeners chime in on the comments and tell me some of the things that I left off. My own list is certainly not exhaustive. So the franchise model. So in a way, you're going to be buying their processes. They give you the kit about how to operate their systems. And I think many of these are investing in marketing for you also. So that might be worth a lot to someone listening to this, depending on your marketing skills. My, and my hunch is that the franchises pretty much all come with some sort of mastermind or community aspect too. So I know about a few of these and one has actually come on the Bookkeeping Side Hustle channel. So I want to give them a shout out first. Breakaway Advisors is 
a franchise model. Their motto is to bring joy to accounting. And I'm going to link the interview I did with them below. But a couple of things that stand out to me are that they support people who want to be quite large, but they also support people who don't want, who, who do want the simpler life, but who still want to make a whole lot of money for their effort that they expend. And there's not a flat fee for the franchisees. It scales with you. So it's a particularly good way to start if you don't have a ton of funds at the beginning. So please listen to the interview with the leaders of Breakaway Advisors. Now I'm going to just go through a laundry list of other franchises that I know of. I haven't dived into the details, so I'm just going to rattle them off. Do your research and do not consider this an endorsement necessarily. So we've got Paget. I think it's called Paget Advisors or Paget Business Services. This has been around for over 50 years. Their current CEO is Jeff Phillips. He's a Baylor Bear, so I mean obviously smart. Uh, the COO is Amanda Aguilard, who has been a huge support to me and the entire bookkeeping side hustle community for years. So check out Paget. I also know about CPA moms. So I'm not certain if you actually have to have a CPA or, and I, and I do know you don't actually have to be a mom. Um, I have met the, their founder, uh, this woman right here. You could check them out. Supporting strategies is another one that I've seen. I don't have any personal connections to any one of their franchisees or anyone who runs this, but it might be a good fit for some who are watching this video. Now, an alternative way to make an investment in the early days of your business is to find a mastermind. I will list some that I know of. Again, I'm going to refrain from endorsing. I'm just providing information. Um, after I list all of these, I will tell you how I would decide between them. First, I'll mention the one by the creator of the program that I took, Bookkeeper Launch. So I took uh, this solo program, uh, but there is one called Bookkeeper Launch Team that you get everything in all these tiers below. You get marketing machine, outstanding people and processes, and you're in the exclusive elite community, uh, which I have heard uh, some people are in. Um, so this could be, oh, and you get two licenses of the training for, for team members, the bookkeeper launch basic training that I took for team members. But you could be a part of the bookkeeper elite group from bookkeepers.com. Next, I'll toss in a good friend of mine, Cindy Schrader. She has a program called Bookkeeping Buds. It's a mastermind coaching program. It's for women only, but Dale, you mentioned your wife was going to do this with you, so she might be able to sign up for this one. Seth David of Nerd Enterprises has a group called 97 and Up. It, uh, he says, join the ultimate mastermind group and online academy for accounting professionals. I have no idea what 97 and Up means, but I know that a lot of people are in his program and it's good. There is a group called Realize run by a guy named Jason Stats. Accountants building shared leverage through collaboration. There is a program called Future Firm Accelerate by Ryan Lazanis. How to quickly scale a seven-figure modern accounting firm that cuts your workload in half. There is a program called Roundtable Labs by Richard Ropa Roberts. A community where everyone counts. C accountants, bookkeepers, CPAs, EAs, firm owners, humans, find your people. I know that this program has been around for quite a while. There's also a very long-standing program called the Woodard Alliance. Woodard Groups, I don't know exactly the name. Um, they used to have um, local in-person groups as well, but there's a membership. There's also private coaching. So did I leave any off? Chime in below and I'll take a look at your recommendation and I might add it to the Google Doc with the URLs for all of these others that I've mentioned. Now, so how do you decide between these? I'll give you how to decide and then I'll give you a how not to decide. First, how to decide. Well, I think you need the stock, the founder, or the main coach. Now, by stock, I don't be creepy or criminal, y'all. Just to take some time to learn about that leader. In the Google Doc below, I'm going to include the social media handle for each founder. Because these people are going to have a lot of influence on you. And that's a privilege that you don't want to give away just to anybody. Who do you want to be like? Who do you find amongst these groups that, is a, that, that the founder is above reproach and that hasn't done anything that makes you skeptical of their ethics? Investigate how much access you will have to them or if they have a team of leaders working for them. See if that leader has any specialties that you need. And make sure you also stalk some of the members of the group. Y'all, this is important. Are the people building the types of businesses that you also want to build? Some of this is like practical and technical stuff. You know, do you want to have a tax component or a bookkeeping component or both? Do you want a lot of automation? Uh, does the group focus on a particular accounting software? Things like that. But you also need to see how much you just resonate 
with the, and enjoy the leader and the community members. This is a total personal preference call. You, you know, you could consider the age of the leader and the members, or you could consider whether it's mostly uh, men or women or whether it's co-ed. You could even consider if the group is politically conservative or liberal or if they keep politics out of the mix. Uh, none of these are right or wrong answers, but find a group that you really like and a leader that you really like so that you have a really strong support group that you're comfortable with because you're going to need it. And now how not to decide. So for this, my answer is that I want to caution against signing up for too many of these. Honestly, even more than one. Just pick one. You're going to be tempted to pick two or three. <laughs> And in very rare occasions, it might be a good idea to sign up for more than one, but I think more often than not, it's, uh, it's, that's just going to be a way of procrastinating the hard work of building a business. So th there's no magic bullet here. If you find a reputable program, they're going to have all the support that you need if you put the work in. Don't be a signer upper instead of a hard worker. And honestly, if you do feel the need to supplement with one, one of these masterminds with another one, it probably shouldn't be another accounting one. It should be a leadership one or a technology one, perhaps a private one-on-one -on -one coach, or some sort of super niche mastermind for a short amount of time to learn that thing that you're needing to learn. And seriously, listeners, if I left off any comparable programs to the ones I listed here, please comment below in the video and I can take a look and I'll add them to the Google Doc in the description that I've, so I've, because I made it easy for folks to begin researching all of these options. And speaking of the Google Doc, uh, a few of the links on that page will be affiliate links for me. They will be very clearly labeled as always, but most of these programs I do not have any sort of financial relationship with. But if you are one of the owners of these programs and you happen to have listened this far and want to provide me a referral link, I won't say no. All right, Dale, I hope this was helpful to you and your wife. I'd love for you to stay in touch about your journey and let me know if anything in this video was helpful or actionable for you. All right, I'm signing off for now.